So, as a professional hobby artist, I have been feeling, to put it lightly, extremely salty about all the recent AI art news. Why? Well, it fundamentally challenges my craft and my purpose as an artist. Not that I'm that great of an artist, but hey, at least I would still like to try. If AI could generate within a few seconds what I dream to achieve in years, such as faces with perfect proportions, landscape with dynamic composition, cinematic lighting and colors, what's even the point of trying to improve as an artist when I'll never be able to catch up with AI? Hello, I'm Ye Mount, a 3D artist who is experiencing a lot of existential dread at the moment. In this video, I will share how I'm coping with this AI revolution and actually play with these new tools and trying to incorporate them into my workflow and create new art from it. To quote Picasso, art is that. Since AI has already stolen from the collective human creativity, I feel quite justified to steal ideas from AI. The plan is to feed Midjourney a prompt to generate a bunch of reference images. Midjourney is one of the most popular text-to-image programs and one of the best for artistic and stylistic results. I'll use the AI images as a concept art. I'll selectively borrow the style, the color, and the composition, and, you know, make it my own. So, one of my favorite aesthetic is images that are dark and gloomy, but at the same time also have little sprinkly and shiny objects scattered throughout. An example would be the city views at night, or, you know, the galaxy. I headed to Discord and asked me Journey to create a dark, moody typography design with floral patterns and galaxy texture. I'm not even sure if that sentence makes sense in English, but Midjourney got to work right away, no questions asked. It took a few rounds of tweaking the prompt, and I ended up adding phrases such as low poly and using 10 types of flowers, but eventually AI gave me, I had to reluctantly admit, something that was quite magnificent. I really like the dark and warm and muted color palette. The flowers also have a whimsical quality to them. I mean, they definitely look like flowers, but it's like 90% of reality mixed with 10% of surrealism, which is awesome and something I want to capture in my own work. So next, I opened Blender and built this flower generation system with geometry nodes. It allows me to draw the outlines of these flower objects, to accurately define where the petals should go and where the stems and the leaves should go. I can basically draw these simple curves, attach a geometry node, and boom, get a 3D flower. I built a few different types of nodes for different plant systems. For example, first, there's one that generates just one full flower. There's one that generates a mini bush of flowers by following the branching patterns of a tree. And finally, there's a node that just scatters a bunch of little flowers in the curve area. I also built all these parameters for adjusting the number of petals and leaves, parameters for tweaking their shapes, their colors, and parameters for applying a little bit of noise displacement to make them look more organic. The parameter panel got a little insane in the end. <laughs> There's probably dozens of knobs over there, but the point of setting this up is to make it easier so that I can rip off very specific elements I like from the AI references. For example, I like the composition of this area. See how there's a cluster of flowers over here, creating a visual center, but then there's this one single flower. It's the rebel. It just refuses to fit in. It stretching out from the cluster creates a nice tension and balance to it. I cherry-picked little areas like this from all over the place from the references and mashed them all together to create this new sketch. Then, based on this sketch, I created the flower curves and then applied the geometry nodes. So basically, once I have the geometry nodes set up, I can focus on the art directing and I have very precise control and flexibility over the shape, the color, and the composition. If you're interested in seeing how exactly I build these geometry node systems, leave a comment below, and I might make some tutorials in the future. So at this point, the scene setup and the modeling part was basically done. When I rendered the whole thing with Cycles, it was already beginning to come together. The lighting was soft and nice, the dreaming, calming vibe from the references was somewhat kept. 
I could technically stop here, but it left me desiring something even more of a personal touch, a secret sauce to the recipe. So I started going through photos from my phone in search of memories that are, you know, visually stimulating. And I found these. In March, I went to the Vancouver Aquarium. It was a trip with many memorable moments. Besides losing our minds for the absolutely adorable beavers, I got inspired by the wonderful sea creatures and how the aquarium presented them. There was a particular setup where you could look through a glass enclosure and see a sea of colorful corals. The way the globe reflected, refracted, and melted together all the color and light was absolutely mesmerizing. So, I wanted to draw upon this impression and recreate it in Blender. Turns out, with ray tracing, this was actually quite easy to do. All I needed was to model the cylindrical cover and throw a glass material on top of it. I followed Ducky3D's glass tutorial to create this colorful, stylized glass shader. But other than that, there's nothing fancy about the scene setup. I used a HDRI image for environment lighting. I have one key light and one fill light, and they're all area lights. But that's it. <laughs> Pretty straightforward scene setup. And this is what I got in the end. I created a series of generative flower arrangements inspired by AI. As self-indulging as it may sound, I'm quite happy with them. I adore how they show off familiar objects in an uncanny way. The refreshing is a neat hack to add complexity to a scene that is otherwise rather minimalistic. This entire time, I felt a strange push and pull between choosing AI's idea and my own idea. Obviously, I really like the reference images that AI produced. However, I was too rebellious of an artist to just faithfully follow whatever direction AI gave me. The hazard, however, was that by inserting my own style, I could ruin the magic in the AI pieces that made it work in the first place. I had to be very deliberate and almost analytical about what elements I want to keep versus replace. In this case, I know that the bits really attracted me from the AI images was the uncanniness of the flowers, the color palette, and the composition of very specific areas. Everything else I was okay with discarding. And in fact, I was trying to inject as much of myself into the piece as possible because this is the only way that I can feel comfortable about calling this a original piece by myself. It is indeed an AI co-creation, but at the end of the day, I want it to be my own. <laughs> so is this what creating art is gonna be like in the age of AI? I truly don't know. What I do know though is AI is really good at generating ideas fast. It's almost like a superpower, and I intend to borrow that power for my future pieces. And frankly speaking, I'm just as scared and clueless and excited as any artist out there. I don't know what the future will bring, or if a human artist would even be involved in the process in the future, but I believe that the only way to find out is to keep experimenting and keep creating. This is why we started making art in the first place. Oh, one last thing. I realized that Blender is really a perfectly future-proof name. Why? Because whatever flavor of AI we will get in the future, it will just be another ingredient that we throw into Blender for it to blend. <laughs> Alright, that's it for the video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.